This episode of Unqualified is brought to you by State Farm, who has surprisingly great rates for your auto insurance. In 1999, my mom recorded me in our family room, delivering the lines for what I thought was a horror movie. My mom read the other roles, and I thought she gave a much better performance than I did. There was even a moment when I seriously considered not sending the tape because that would require a trip to the post office and an entire day's salary for postage. Not that I had a paying job. I was surprised when I received a phone call asking if I could audition in person. Then I realized that the casting director must have mixed up my tape with someone else's. I could have pointed out the error, but I'd never been to LA and wanted to go. So my parents gave me airline miles and I flew to Los Angeles, Burbank actually, where I auditioned every day for a week and slept on three different couches. At the week's end, my friend with the least comfortable couch offered to drive me to the airport. And because at the time it was hard to find good Mexican food in Washington state, I wanted one last burrito. My pager began buzzing just as our nachos arrived. There was a payphone in the back of the restaurant, and when I returned the page, I was told that I got the role. It was one of the biggest surprises of my life. I was also surprised to learn that Scary Movie was actually a comedy. This was after my audition. Speaking of nice surprises, State Farm provides coverage that meets your needs at a surprisingly great rate. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Call or go to statefarm.com for a quote today. Hey, dear listeners, today's guest is the wonderful actress, comedian, and screenwriter Casey Wilson, who you probably know from Happy Endings, Bride Wars, Marry Me, and a zillion other things. I really love talking with her, and I hope you enjoy the episode. Before we begin, I want to read a couple of your responses to our unqualified calls. The first letter is for Emily, who was on the episode with Judy Greer. Emily has been dating a guy from her work and was concerned about their age difference of 18 years. This is from Katie, who writes, Hi, Anna. My husband and I have a 19-year age gap, and I completely understand how Emily feels. When we met, I was 29 and he was 48. We were friends from the dog park, and I didn't know until our third date how old he really was. We both thought such an age difference would end our relationship before it had even really begun. Luckily, it didn't end. All of my friends gave me the same advice that you and Judy gave Emily. Age is nothing but a number. If you are happy and enjoy each other's company, it won't matter. My friends were right. Most of the time, I forget how much older he is, and other people stopped caring, assuming they ever did care. But Emily, don't have those one-sided conversations in your head. Talk to him. Tell him your concerns. Honest communication is one of the most important things in any relationship. Wishing you the best, Katie. We also received another letter for Dee, who was on the episode with Ed Droste. Dee was recently married and is finding it difficult living on a military base with her enlisted husband. This is from Dylan, who writes, Hey Anna, I too was a dependent in a military family, and I wanted to share this experience with Dee. When I was 11 in 2004, my mom married a guy in the British Army, and we moved away to Cyprus. Cyprus was great. We considered ourselves lucky, as most positions were reserved for residents of Cyprus. Unfortunately, after three years, we were moved again, this time to an army base in southern England. It was an awful place, and my mother became deeply depressed. Of course, that affected all of us. Even from a young age, I could see the disparity between how a man was treated on the army base compared to how a woman was treated. I also think that there was a lot of pressure on army wives to hurry up and have a baby, as if they just need to occupy themselves with something. You would think all these women would take care of each other, but that was not the case. There seemed to be a hierarchy among the older wives, and they were very unfriendly to my mom. We ended up moving several times before coming back to our homeland, Scotland, and by then the military life had really taken a toll. I would advise Dee to really think about her future and not make any decisions lightly. Having a child will, of course, change her life forever. I just got back into the podcast after a period of bad health, and I'm loving it so much. I really hope you're doing well, Anna, and I'm sending you lots of love from not-so-sunny Scotland, Dylan. Thank you, Dylan. Thank you, Katie. And thank you, dear listeners. These stories are so helpful, so valuable to anyone living through similar experiences. I really admire your strength and vulnerability, and I love how you support one another. Please help the unqualified community continue to grow by sending us your questions, your answers, and your stories. Just go to our website, unqualified.com. And now here she is, Casey Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, you are listening to Unqualified with your host, Anna Ferris. Tell me two things you're honest with right now. 
Okay, I think I'm honest about motherhood. And I think I'm honest about like where my career is and like what my life is and maybe what I wanted it to be, but I'm happy with what it is. And I'm like very clear on kind of my place in the world. Does that make sense? It was, is it boring? It, it was too articulate. It wasn't like <laughs> And you messy have to be honest enough. about that. It, wa- it just wasn't, <sighs> it wasn't fucked up enough. Okay, okay. Yeah, so tell me, okay. So well, probably the fucked you, up stuff I'm not honest about. Well, that, this is what I'm saying. Okay, okay, okay. okay. So if you're honest. Eating at- stuff, not honest, working mm-hmm. on it. What about motherhood? Like when you say you're honest about I find it what do you mean? so difficult. Uh, and like, I think I'm what, honest about what, that. What, it's just so tiring. I'm an old mom, I feel. And I don't like to play. I find it so challenging. I feel so oh. unconfident. You know, my son seemed to like, my older son really gravitated more to my husband so I was like just thought there was something so terribly wrong that is so heartbreaking though isn't it I mean you carried this child and everyone's like oh is he a mama's boy and I have to just keep saying no especially with your first kid that's such a vulnerable time yes it's like the bottom's hey, falling out I'm on every medication like possible no <laughs> yeah. identity anymore well, yeah. like because I remember when Jack was like more drawn to my dad or Chris or my brother Jack is Jack is my son thanks Casey. for getting close to the mic you have him I think I baffle my son frequently. Um, (laughs) But it was heartbreaking a little bit, like when they have that bond and it's like, you little son of a bitch, I carried you. You motherfucker. Yeah. I know. I guess if I call my son a son of a bitch, well, Well, I'm just putting two and two together right now. (laughs) You're just understanding it all. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Casey, okay, so wait, I have a a bunch of things I want to talk to you about. But I was just downstairs so we're at warner brothers just to let our listeners know and uh in my creepy dressing room that's filled with a bunch of fucking weird shit but seen a lot of dolls well yeah. we'll talk about that part okay. later but um so this week's episode and we're recording this on what is it tuesday so this week's episode we're shooting over the this is boring but point is we have six babies for one baby role Right, because you have to have yeah, a lot of babies yeah, yeah. in and out. And have you done work you, with babies? Well, I bet you've worked with babies. Yes. <laughs> but have you done multicam? No, I've done like guest star roles on multicam. Okay, but no baby work, just single cam baby work. Well, we have this routine okay. here where we do Monday through Wednesday, sometimes into Thursday. We do run throughs, you know, yeah, for yeah, the producers. Yeah. So we don't have to get in the hair or makeup or anything. It's yeah. awesome. It's great. <laughs> But the, so there's six babies and we were doing run through. And the reason why I wanted to bring this up with you is because you have kids. I'm with you. So as we're holding the babies, doing the run through, yeah. I felt like everybody was clocking my response <gasps> to reacting towards a baby. Really? Like, can she do it? <gasps> like, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, yeah. Like, I, They're like, like let's that, see if she's really got what it mode. takes to do something she's been doing for seven years. Yeah. And did you feel like you passed people's test? The weirdest thing was, no. I, well, I think that it was... The, people's the, fucked up test? And then the writers got into like a, a weird baby argument, which I was grateful for because normally during run-through, they pick on us. And it wasn't like they were picking on the baby. Yeah. They were <laughs> picking on each other's parental um, oh, abilities. Okay. They were like, no, no, no. The they turned should, on the each baby other. should not be in that thing. No, no, no. The baby should be in there. Well, when I was pregnant, well, when we had the baby, the, mm, it became, they, okay. they turned on each other. Yeah. And it was wonderful. That's nice. It that feels, feels really so good. Good. It takes the heat off you and then let them tear each other down. But I was also resentful at the same time. It's insane. Like, yeah. Because like, the baby's crying during rehearsal. Like they're pr- trying to make the baby I happy. I feel like I'm always doing a performance scene. of mothering and it's my least favorite quality of parents when I hear them out and they're like, yes. And they're talking for my benefit as like a passerby. And I, then I just want to cut to them in their house on their phone, not paying attention to their child. It's like very performative parenting, but I engage in it quite a bit. <laughs> I was just bitching about this very same thing yeah. to Alice and Janie. She said that one time she was on set and she was acting with a baby and the baby <laughs> nurse said, oh, well, you just don't have the touch. <gasps> and that no. is something that I think that all fucking women can relate to. So fucking dark. Right? I had a, right? a baby nurse. I know not everyone can relate to that and I know it's not great. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a yeah, woman Casey, that over. I was cool. breastfeeding and I was crying and fighting with my husband as you do while yeah. you're breastfeeding. And she came in the room and she's like, I just have to stop you. And I thought she was trying to stop us from fighting and like <laughs> screaming at each other while I was crying. She goes, I have to stop you. All the energy of your crying and fighting, you're transferring right to your baby. And I've been seeing you do that a lot. I was like, what? 
just when people say shit like this, it's the most. That is so, I, and you, you remember it like verbatim. Of course. Uh, because it was. Then I started like really wailing, but then I like gave the baby away. So I'm like, well, I don't want to contaminate him with my tears. But he's seen it so many times now. He's, <laughs> he's okay with it. But people say things that are so shocking. Completely. Okay. So. Take me back. Okay. So you're in Virginia. Yeah. So when do you get SNL? And will you take me like through, you know, in like three minutes if I time you? Okay. I want like the experience from Virginia to New York. Okay. Wow. Virginia to SNL. Yeah. Okay. In Virginia, my dad builds me a stage. I like hired and fired neighborhood kids and would take their parts and was horribly mean. and I love you. (laughs) Horribly mean to them. Then I went to NYU and I met June Diane Raphael. I was my best friend for for like 20 years now. We lived together and we did a two-woman show together where we were awful and we like ran a fake production company out of our offices when we were assistants and we were just little monsters trying to get everyone we could to see our show and then we got agents for writing we thought we were going to get agents for acting this is all very relatable and we went to a bathroom and cried and i was like they think we're ugly and it's not a great <laughs> your face it's a joke Wait, you guys are fucking beautiful. Well, we were just upset because we thought we were going to be huge stars and then someone's like we'd like to represent you to write but then that turned out to be the greatest that. thing of our lives. Okay, so then what happened? It was wonderful. Then we wrote this movie, Bride Wars, together. And then Which somewhere along there, I met you. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> and that makes my three-minute cut. Let me yeah. tell you. Yeah. That makes the three minutes. <laughs> Then I dated everyone's sight, everyone in the comedy world, everyone with a beard <laughs> trying to act younger. I dated anyone in improv. Oh my God, I rock. really wish I could come up with some names to make you oh, confess right now. Just, you know, whomever oh. was mildly, mediocrely funny, oh. I was having okay. sex with them. <laughs> and then I... I won't put you on the spot, but I really want to talk to you about this. got some, right. you know... All right. And then I sent a tape to SNL by myself that Ruben Fleischer, this director, he like taped me in a room and I didn't even submit it to my agent, which is because I was like, uh, I'll just send it How in. How do you send a tape I in I just for sent SNL? it like, to but, but, SNL, but, 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 30 what Rock. It? I just did characters and I was babysitting for this great manager, Naomi Odenkirk and her husband, Bob Odenkirk. She wasn't managing me, but I, I was like, do you want to look at my You're, SNL tape? Go ahead. The Odenkirks. Yeah, the Odenkirks babysitting. Okay. Yeah, no, sorry, like sorry. holding a cat toy and throwing it for their cat. And then... And she had like Kristen Wiig and like all these big people. I'm like, will you look at my audition? And it was like 60 minutes long. She's like, it should be two. It should be shorter than this story. And so she's like, let me help you edit it down. And she did. And I sent it in. And then like six months later, they called me and said, come in for an audition. And that was the highlight of that were, experience. <laughs> were you anxious during that six months? Did you no, I it, genuinely, genuinely forget? forgot about yeah, it yeah. because it was so far-fetched and so long. I know. I, I sort of forgot. Okay, so you... I was trying to think about well, the first time we met. And was that a party? It was we, fun. We did that funny thing where we stripped down. Yeah. And we, we had yep. grown our hair out. Really we both, long. But we both didn't know no. that we had done that. But then we thought it was funny we to tie was, our hair together. Yes. Yeah. And we tied it together Everyone's with one of those like so sewing kits that, <laughs> yes. oh gosh, who was it? Like Ryan got it from like a hotel. <laughs> like, oh my and God. And Emily had it too. And you knew how to tie a little thread. Well, I was a Girl Scout till senior year in high oh. school and I didn't mention that in my run from See, Virginia. But that's why you always have to have a backup plan. <laughs> Okay, now, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, we talked about the baby shit, yeah. um, which uh, I love I'm... those little babies. But man, I, I felt like I was being analyzed from a woman. like Maternal standpoint. Uh, like, it's yeah, disgusting. like I'm just like, oh, I don't know. There's like eight baby handlers around and I'm like. <laughs> baby I, handlers. Like a hand sanitizer. Like yeah. I'm trying to be good. Yeah. And anyway, it felt like my sense of like whatever maternal instinct was totally being tested today and I resented it. I resent it too. No <sighs> one's testing a man's maternal and in- paternal instinct rather. If a man like walks by a baby, it's like, oh, look at him. He's such a great dad. Totally. But don't you think as your kids get older, yeah. though, it's easier. So much easier. You can just be like. Get the fuck Go out the do door. something. It's so much easier. That's I'm actually say. really starting to enjoy it. I got that from you, actually. Really? Yeah. I think last time we talked, you were like, oh, no, all you have to say to your son is get the fuck out the door. I know. And I've always said that. <laughs> get the fuck out. Yeah. Yeah. Did it- you breastfeed for a while? Yeah, for three months. But I was so, I was sobbing all the time. Me too. Because Jack was premature, so he was, like, fed through a yeah. tube. This is the comedy portion of my This routine. is when, yeah, people are going to love this one. Go ahead. 
But I just pumped all yeah, the time. Yeah. Did you pump? Which is hell. Yes, it's hell. But that's when you learn to love reality television, which I know oh, that you love. God, I mean, I I learned way before that, but I love it so much, <laughs> so much. What's your favorite? Have you seen Love Is Blind yet? No. On Netflix? No. Please get at it. Is it? It's the greatest show of all okay, time. Wait, 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 wait. Can you just give me a summation? Overview. Okay. It's like Bachelor on Speed. People get in a room, and I don't even like Bachelor, and there's a wall between them, so they can't see each other. They're all hot. That's important to know. And they just talk between the wall. Like, they're in, like, a log cabin, or they're in a nice place with they're wine. Log- no, they're just, like, in a nice place, but they're on a date, but they can't see each other. And they start confessing everything to each other. They fall in love with each other. Then they lift the wall. Then they go to Mexico. Then they sleep together. Then they, they realize always- other people, <gasps> the other people they've been dating through the wall are there what then they go visit each other's families and this all happens in 10 days and then they get engaged but what kind of things do they say to each other such embarrassing give give, give me like okay okay, as my sister the wall the wall's down okay the wall's down okay you if you know are you a dude or am i a dude I'm going to be the girl. Okay, wait. Do they dive? My range like, is not that. go deep dive and immediately? Yes, yes. They're like, I've never met anyone like this. Someone's playing guitar like, for what's, someone like, else. Like, like you ex- get me. Well, how do you feel I about needed. like mortality? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a, you know, okay, this wait, is a sorry, younger crew. Sorry, sorry. I'm getting ahead of myself. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. No one has understood me like Wait, you are you understand. a girl or a boy? I'm a girl. What I'm, kind of question would I ask you? You'd be okay. like, do you have a name yet? Yes, we know each other's names. That's all we know. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Do names. you want to be Casey or do you want to be a different name? I'll be Casey. Okay. No, you know what? Okay, I'm going to be Chad. Okay. <laughs> okay, and I'm Monica. Okay. A, a, a really young person's name. Okay, I want to go with Monica. Do they do that? Do they They're, say you're I want to like go? You're already with... there. Right. Now, full disclosure, I've only seen one episode, but I... <laughs> What? I'm hooked. <laughs> okay. Hey, Monica, here's what I want to know about you. What's up? What has been like the greatest... <laughs> You're funny. You're funny. You just make me laugh. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. But like, seriously, what has been the greatest accomplishment or the most devastating thing that's happening? Oh, my God. Well, like three days ago, I got broken up with. But uh, I'm so open to love now. Yeah. It's crazy because I went cool. on a journey. Like, I had to get over it. And now here I am. And I'm feeling good. Uh, you sound like you're really brave. Oh, That's God. Cool. Thank you so much for saying that you're brave, honestly. No, for saying that I'm I mean, brave. I don't know. I mean, but no, y- you do know. You are brave. We haven't. Chad, if I know anything, it's you and that you're brave. Yeah, yeah, no. Okay, but wait. So what's been like the I'm biggest. Crying. I'm sorry. Like you accomplishment. Like I got to know I where you're at in any. life. I don't well, have any as of yet. That's cool because that means you have like goals that are yet to be accomplished. Mm, goals are forthcoming. Forthcoming. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, but so like what do you want to do? Okay, like, in here's your what I want to do. Yeah. I'm going to hit you with something and you just yeah. tell me what you think, okay? Because yeah, yeah. I've never like done my music That's for so anyone. That's cool. I love how honest you are. You're honest. And, open I, went, song. and I went to Fuck. the store. That's cool. And I went there to stay. That's cool. Well, that's and that's all good. I have. God damn, you've been like, good. Oh my God, I'm God. crying because it just like, feels so good to God. just show that side of myself You know everyone. what's cool is because you just talked about the journey that you went on with your breakup. Yeah. And then you like morphed it into like a mundane journey, which is fucking cool because it's like, that's like an allegory. Like how you are relating a breakup. Immediately. So, like, I just like put it into my art. And I had written that a long time ago, but the thing is, it felt like it was appropriate because it's the only thing I have written. Do you want to know what I do? What do you do, Chad? So I, I like I have a problem interrupting. No, no, please go ahead. No, no, I just didn't know if you want if you cared about me at all or anything. What do you do, Chad? I'm so oh, sorry. No, no, it's cool. I just no, didn't I'm know if so you cared sorry, about me or Chad. if you were interested Chad, in me at all. No, that's I fine. I want to know what I you just, do. Uh, Are we in a fight? No, we're not in a fucking fight. Chad, come on, dude! Fucking like Chad. It's just like, just hear me out. All right. Okay, what do you do? Go. Don't just tell me to fucking go. I'm not like a Chad, fucking... don't you tell me what to not do, you fucker. I'm sorry. God, this is like dad stuff coming out really bad. I know, babe. I know. But Okay, um, I want to know about you. Do you play guitar by any chance? Fuck no, no, bass. Get out. Get out. Get the fuck out. Oh my God, this is like crazy. I knew we were supposed to. This is like so crazy, okay? Because like one time my friend was like, I like bass players. I was like, I don't. She's like, one day, just look at them. They're hot and I can't see you, but I feel like you're hot. It's, it's, we're in the back, you know? Yeah. Yeah, we know how to fucking like, we just like fucking keep the pace. I'm touching myself. Good, good girl. Good girl. Can't wait for them to lift that wall. <laughs> can't wait for them to lift that wall. 
Is that what they do? They, they yeah, lift they lift it. So do you like Chad? I really do. I well, think that's a great match. <laughs> okay, how about this? You You're better are... than all the improv guys I dated. I'd want you to know that sincerely. Casey. Did you do a ton of improv? No, you didn't need to. You're already a I star. I never did. Thank you. No, I just had a lot of lonely times in the woods behind my parents' house. And then that's where Chad was born. All kinds of creatures were born there. <laughs> just alone. Outside of Seattle. Yeah. Far from Seattle. Yeah. No. It's a tragic story. But here we are now. But here we are now in this yes, room with yes, like yes, 20 yeah. Barbie dolls <gasps> for a grown woman. There's something really fucking dark about the weirdness of that realization. I've never really vocalized that, but it's all true. Okay, now I'm going to ask you some questions. Okay. Okay. What is your favorite ice cream flavor? Mint chocolate chip. Oh, I like it. What was your favorite children's book? Oh, uh, uh, The Hundred Dresses. I don't know that one. It's really good. It's about girls being left out. Oh. Hmm. All right. What was your favorite toy as a child? A Tinker Toys. <laughs> you remember those? And I like Popples. Remember Popples? No. You, what? It's, no, I, I'm way older than you are, Casey. No, you're I don't not. understand. Yes, I am. No, you're not. I don't understand. Tinker Toys, weren't they like from the 40s? I think so. I think so. My parents were you, just they, like throwing out whatever were, the fuck they, they could find, like from a thrift store. Wow. <laughs> so you really knew how to make your way in the world with that kind of I had no idea these questions would be so revealing about my parents' economic tinker status. Tinker Toys? <laughs> yeah. Tinker Toys. You heard me. <laughs> All right. All right. What did you want to be growing up? Uh, an actress. So you were already like a performer at a young age. I think so, which is so annoying, but yes. Are you the youngest in your family? No, the oldest. That feels unusual. Really? Usually the youngest, I feel like, are the it's performers. Trying to get the... Because yeah. it's like the parents have given up on you. <laughs> I loved female comedians watching them. Who? Oh my God, I love Madeline Kahn and Catherine O'Hara, everyone on SNL, like Molly Shannon, Cherry O'Terry, I was obsessed with. Clue was a big movie for me. Did you ever see Clue? Yes, I'm having deja vu. Madeline Kahn, like Eileen Brennan, Leslie Ann Warren. I was like, oh, wow, three women are in a movie and they're all so funny. You don't normally, it's like maybe one. Goldie Hawn, of course. Did you have like those comfort movies that you could watch? Yeah, I was big into Steel Magnolias. Steel Magnolias? Yeah. You were watching over and over and over Yeah, again? I've seen it about a million times. I'm going to tell you one that wait, I've wait. watched over and over do that you, is devastating, which is Terms of Endearment. So you're drawn, is this like the release for you? Yes, but Terms of Endearment is very funny. Yeah. What about kids' movies? Were Sound and music. Like, never new story? No, I never Willow? watch it. So I also never, my parents never showed me like, not they showed me but i never did you watch all the breakfast club all those never seen any of only them. at my friend's houses my i mean little mermaid me. of course i saw yeah I feel like i watch a lot of jane fonda's workout video it was on all the time what? in my house my mom was doing <laughs> okay what was your first boss like insane absolutely insane i was her assistant for years and years okay but this was in virginia or in new, new york? york well i mean i babysat my whole life but this was like my first boss boss and she changed her name legally to make her last i'm just gonna say her last name not her first name her last name was vermeer and she changed the spelling to make it so people would think she was related to the painter no yep she was what? insane she would throw quarters no, wait, whoa, whoa, at my whoa, whoa, head whoa, whoa, whoa. no yes. no she yes didn't she really... would to get my attention she tried to throw them at my shoulder to get my attention and she thought i was such an idiot because i kept being like money's falling out of my pocket so i just keep pocketing it she would be so upset she'd have me come in on the treadmill and she'd be crying about her weight and she'd want me to hold her hand what, what kind of it was office bad. was this she was funding a like very small motion picture thing that her ex-husband was funding but we never made any films and we worked for five years and oh no it was five years dark. is a long time yeah she I'm wanted sorry. me to dress up and go to Frances McDormand's house and give her the script. It was really embarrassing and horrible job. Did you do that? Yeah, I did. One of the most intimidating people in Hollywood. And just like but, go yeah. to her and find her? She's like, I think I know her uh, apartment building. I'm like, this is wrong. Um, Last thing is we were being hey. evicted. She goes, don't open the door to anyone because it could be someone serving us papers. We're just going to stay here. They can't kick us out. So if anyone knocks, we get into a freestanding wardrobe in her office and we stand there. But I was coming in with my lunch one day and I saw a FedEx guy behind me and he kind of followed me in and he's like, oh, I just need you to sign this. I wasn't thinking. Signed for it. He kicked us out and that was our last day. And she screamed at me like 
the most abusive screaming in the world. And I finally, the first time, I go, give me my fucking check, you fucking bitch. Yes. And it felt so I, good. Yes. I had not spoken like back to her one time. <laughs> um, okay, what is your greatest fear? The, uh, leaving my children without a mother. Okay. Where's the You're like move moving on? on? Yep. Just like yep. make chocolate chip ice cream? Okay. Yes. Okay. To whom would you most like to apologize and why? Ah, that's a fucking hard one. To an old boyfriend that I treated really badly and who was just such a nice person. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. Yeah. But I think most of us have a degree of that. Like I was, when I was growing up, I was on like a C minus social level. You were? Oh, for sure. Maybe D plus. But I remember being not so kind. I remember being cruel, if I'm being honest, to a couple of kids that were like lower than I was. And I really regret that. There's a girl I'm thinking of now in third grade that I was really mean to, maybe sixth grade. I've also thought, I'm like, should I get in touch with her and apologize? Does that draw more I attention? Don't know. Have I don't they know. forgotten? And then it's like. Or, and, and is it the gift that we're giving ourselves? By exactly. Forget, you know, like, what? what, what Who's it's, it for? It's so complicated. I don't you know. were doing that because other people weren't treating you very well? Yeah. I was like the, uh, I was like a shelter dog. Oh, no, this is so. And when you became uh, such a success, did those B and A and did oh, they come they out of the woodwork? So uh, no, I lost touch with everybody. It felt yeah. so. I don't know. It sounds I, like that was good. Well, I think that, like, I spent my, you know my middle school and high school just hoping that the world was bigger. Yeah, and it helped that I was acting at a pretty young age. Yeah, I wonder if as. The oldest child, did you feel more of a sense of responsibility? I did. Someone was saying about sibling order, like the oldest one is coming over the hill first, like in battle, because the parents don't know what they're doing. And you're kind of you're just the first like you're out there in the front line in a way. And I'm not saying like I'm a hero, but I think, you know, the oldest kind of sees the most and gets like the most chaotic. And there's version. so much hyperness around yes. like raising the older around you. So I think I was responsible. My brother and I had very different experiences growing up. I feel like a lot of siblings, there's overlap, but also it's like two different childhoods sometimes yes i agree you're the youngest yeah okay that's why i'm a little bratty you're not bratty oh go on (laughs) what do you mean i can't go on (laughs) this episode of unqualified is brought to you in part by best fiends we all know there really is only one match three style game worth playing it's the one with an actual storyline cool collectible characters and non-stop action-packed adventure It's the one with literally thousands of challenging puzzles to solve. And yes, I'm using the word literally correctly. Of course, I'm talking about best fiends. You meet your best fiends early in their careers. They don't have much experience, but they have heart. I recognized a little piece of myself in each of them. And so I began to assemble the perfect team. I watched them grow as we solved puzzle after puzzle, working hard and playing hard. Today, my best fiends are ready to go anytime and anywhere. I'm really proud of what they have become. With new challenges and levels added all the time, there's never a boring moment. So download Best Fiends free today on the App Store or Google Play. That's friends without the R. Best Fiends. (laughs) So what is a trait you most dislike in yourself? Oh, God, I know, so I know. many, so no. many. Um, no, 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 I we dislike this. how bad I'll speak to myself in my head. It's gotten better, like dulled, but like a very running monologue of like, why would you do that? Why would you say that? Just whatever it is, it's like very negative sometimes. Do you think the way I would was, never speak to another human ever? Do you think that was ever exacerbated by SNL? I think SNL, when I was let go, like confirmed my voice of like, Of course, you had the opportunity of a lifetime and you were only there two seasons. Of course, that you were like revealed as a fraud comedically or or whatever it was. So I think it confirmed a voice that was already there. But definitely being there for that year or two was like you are in your lowest mental state, like your lowest emotional self. What do you think that is? Relative to the world, please. Right, right. Yes. It's just a very brutal place. You're not sleeping. Comedy is so hard to do when it's just not a conducive environment for comedy. I hosted SNL twice and I was so overwhelmed yeah i felt like okay i'm not getting any approval everyone has their own yeah and not recognizing that all the writers have to 
focus on their shit yes. that they're all nervous. So as, as like the host, you're like, oh, as God, the host is like happening up. to you. Yeah. And, like nobody's happy with anything I'm doing. I have no idea what the fuck I'm doing. Yeah. I felt like 40 years is gone. Yeah. I felt the same when they sent me back my stuff. This was my analogy of it. They sent me back all my stuff and they, all the hosts a lot of times give like alcohol as like, thank you. So you have like a million bottles of alcohol on your shelf. Plus I had all these photos of like my mom and my family in a box. They sent it all back. They didn't put it with packing stuff. So all the alcohol had exploded. All the oh, bottles no. had exploded over all my photos. Uh-huh. And I was like, this box represents my emotional over- state and my life. And I just like took it to the trash. Uh-huh. And I was like, this is me. This was my experience. Just like the, uh, all your yeah. fucking things that matter to you most have just exploded. Have you done a job that makes you feel... I mean, Happy Endings is such a fucking great show. Oh, thank and, you. And like, and you guys were... The writing was brilliant. The casting was brilliant. Like, And you guys, like, I was exciting to watch because of the chemistry that you guys all, all had and the joy yeah. that, if, that felt joy, like... It was just joyful compared... And I yeah. just come off of SNL. Right. I watched about every episode of The Kardashians on my couch crying in sweatpants for like four weeks. Then I went and auditioned for that and I got it. It was the most joyful experience. I met Adam Pally, my best friend in the world. And I met my husband who created it. And I mean, it changed my life so completely that, and I don't mean to be cheesy, but truly if I hadn't been let go from SNL, I I wouldn't have my life or my kids. So I have to kind of see it that way, but I'm still driving down the street like, God damn it. Yeah. The whole experience. I felt like I always say I was wandering around a party that I had been invited to, but the host didn't introduce me to anyone. So I'm just like wandering around the background and people are like, why are you here? <laughs> oh, okay, wait. What or who is the greatest love of your life? My husband. No. We can't say is- that. I, well, okay, you can. Okay, no, go ahead. What were you gonna, I was going to eliminate any like uh, child yeah. or... Husband, but I maybe okay. I, I got one. Okay. I'm gonna say my dearest friend, June Diane Rayfield. Can we say that? I love June, she's yes. the best. I love you, June. Just deep, deep, deep. Um, okay, when are or were I think are is a better way yeah. to put this happiest? I will say unhappy endings being in that oh. time of life, yeah, because I was filled with relief and joy to get to have people see what you can do and get to do it after that experience it's such a good fucking show thank you i think it was ahead of its time a bit i guess because yeah. i couldn't figure out why uh, you know what can we do um okay what's the closest you've come to death well my mom sorry but i mean look you know you skated over my last Shit. one about my mom and here we are you're right in virginia they do they tried wanted to do an open casket I was like please god no oh. when i walked in to see her the woman that did her makeup came up to me and said and i quote can I ask you, who did your mama's eye lift? It is so beautiful. <gasps> and I was so touched, and I thought my mom would be so thrilled. So, But I thought, I, I think, love let's that. close the casket. It was a very nice compliment. So I have seen, I know I seem jaunty. I just don't want to bring everyone down. I really love that story. Yeah. Okay, what do you consider your greatest achievement? And don't say kids. <sighs> okay. Because it feels like that's the thing we're supposed to say as moms. I think I have maintained pretty much every girlfriend I've made since that is close to me since like first grade. That is fucking amazing. I think an achievement. That is huge. And I love that that's the first thing that came to your mind because I struggle with this a lot. I don't have a lot of friends in general and I don't have a lot of female friends. And it's really, yeah, it's difficult for me. And I think about it a lot. I don't know if it's like the, sometimes I feel like there's a language that I don't understand. It surprises me that you don't, but I'm really? hearing what you're yeah, saying. That's yeah. kind of weird to say. You've like felt closer to guys. No, it's not even that actually. Okay. It's just that I was a solitary person. Kid. Yeah. yeah. And I, I, I spent a lot of time. But quantity of friends home. is not important. But I know I, I just said it was my greatest achievement. <laughs> <laughs> so when I tried to actively make yeah. friends, I didn't know the waters to navigate. Yes. Yeah. So I would say awkward things like, oh, cool socks. Right. And you can't say that. <laughs> no. You just can't. Not in today's world. Nope. I'm sorry to hear that, but... Oh, that's sweet of you. It's like harder to make friends later in life. I, and I don't mean to say oh. to make you feel... Although I have made some, actually, some good friends. I think that there's like fr- some friends 
stay in your life, right? Because yeah. of nostalgia. Yes. And you have those things in common. And then with any luck, you can grow yeah. from the nostalgia into like, you can find the commonalities that keep your friendship. Sometimes it's just nostalgia, I think. Yes. I'm Sometimes talking about is. this like I know. No, but I hear what you're saying, which is that you, I think you have made some great friends later in life. Yeah, I have. That's wonderful. I take that back. You can make great friends in life. And I feel really bad I said that. I didn't no, no, mean no. you couldn't. I was just no. trying to think about it. I'm like, no, I find no. it slightly harder just because when you're growing up, it's like, oh, these are well, my crew or and especially in like, college here. They're, there and they go again. And when you have a job that only lasts three or four months yeah. and you become close with people that you really like. And they go. Okay. The last question. How would you like to be remembered? <sighs> okay. I have one word. What? Generous. That's a beautiful answer. Can I steal it? <laughs> Please. It's strange. I don't know. That's just what popped to mind. What about you? Selfish? <laughs> no, I was going to say that the idea of our obsession with how we will be remembered probably consumes too much of our lives because we won't have... I don't care. It's because like, we who won't, cares? We won't be able to... I never get legacy and all that shit. It's like... I, yeah, it's like... Let's, uh, let's live uh, now. Right. Who cares what someone... Like, that life is here. Yeah. Can I give a song recommendation to answer yes, this please, question? Yes. Okay, it's My Life by Iris Dement. Just listen to that and that'll be my answer. Iris? No, I bet one person will listen. Maybe not even Iris one. Iris Dement? Iris Dement. She's a kind of country, but a, not country like bad country. A great singer. D-E-M-E-N-T. Iris Dement. And it's called My Life. Okay, these are deal breakers. You have to imagine you're single. Okay. All right. On the first date, mm -hmm. he asks your blood type. Okay. Is that a deal breaker? Yes, weird. Why? Just weird. What is your blood type? Oh, positive. Do you think it's more weird because you don't know what it is? Yeah, you maybe. would have to answer. Actually, yeah, why would it be a deal breaker? It's just something someone's talking about. No, Bro, no you know why it's weird? Because they're asking about that blood type diet. That's why it's weird. You know why I think it's weird? To me, it feels like it would be a question that somebody would cleverly ask. Right. Like, oh, yeah, this is my sin. Like, so, yeah, I don't care about what your, what your sign is, but. Which blood type? You're right. Yeah, when you're right. You're or, right. but it could be something like if he's a doctor and you're engaged in really, you know, stimulating conversation. If he's a doctor, nothing's a deal breaker. <laughs> well, it could also be a nurse or somebody who just cares about your well being. Right. I don't mind a girlfriend asking that. that I don't, Astrological. I, I'm not good with, with that. With just small yeah. talk. See, stuff. to me, <laughs> astrological is very deep talk. <laughs> What is your sign? Well, I'm into it. What is your The sign? worst one, Scorpio. You know, I'm supposed to be a Scorpio. What are you? I love it that you said it was the worst well, one. Well, it's like you're just like a jealous. You have been my enemies. You have so much rage. What do you think I am? Oh, my God. Aries? No, no but if you were supposed to be Scorpio, you're right there. You're not a Libra. What's the other one? Virgo? Aquarius? Okay, well, at this point. If you're this it's, into it's, it, right. you should know your neighboring sign. I know. I don't. I guess I'm not that into it. Okay. It also starts with an S. Sagittarius? Yeah. Interesting. I don't really know a lot of Sagittarius. Oh, yeah. We're secret. We like to hide See, under the couch. It seems like you don't mind talking about you. it. <laughs> you don't mind talking about it, do you? <laughs> okay. okay. He plays the guitar with his feet for you Disgusting. on the second Disgusting. Anyone who's even breaking out a guitar, no thank you. Even just breaking out a guitar. I know. And my husband did that, but even he was like, this is so upsetting. No, can you give he had me some self specific reasons about it? why? It's just sad to like bring a woman home and be like, I got a song I want to play for you. But then with your feet, it's like, ooh. You think that would be slightly more? I'm not a feet person. No, I don't, I don't love that. I think it's tricky with, like, if I was on a date, I like to be the performer. You don't need anyone strumming and away. I certainly don't need an instrument because right. I just perform. But you've dated performers and you don't mind that. I have a hard time just as a person sitting still and listening to somebody's homemade song. <laughs> right, which is, that's me too. Because I like to talk. I like to do the right. entertaining. Yeah, it's that's horrible. The attention needs to, you know, I'm right. not, I'm, I'm just, get right back at you. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so I, I take, take like, I'll host a podcast. Yeah. yeah, I'm not a foot person. I know, and it does feel like if he's, when women are always like, "Ooh, my husband rubbed my feet." I'm like, "What? Oh, really? Disgusting." You don't. Um, Maybe I just said my husband. No, that's not interesting because I actually that. I'm not sure how much I love it at times. Sometimes, but sometimes. So you when, are getting. Foot well, sometimes if, they're, if I've been in my tube socks, I wear tube socks because I'm <laughs> at night. No, no, no. But just during the day. So if my tube socks have come off after I've worn them all day, there's like a nice like moisture on my foot. <laughs> what do you mean tube socks? Oh, 
Are you ready? Yeah. I have to take off my boots. Like white athletic tube socks? Like the kind Why of tube socks. Why in God's name <laughs> are you wearing a sock right up to and your left. knee <laughs> that has right and left on it dry fit <laughs> non-wicking tube uh-huh. socks. Yes. What? Why? Yeah. Do you have like circulation problems? No. no yeah. Well, I my feet hurt on the state. I don't know. Okay. I didn't mean to be also, so. I'm sure there's a reason Casey, that. I am rejecting sort of a traditional sexuality. Oh, God. <laughs> no, thank you. You know. I I love that. I mean, I, I'm warming to it and I now I'm finding yeah. it charming. Yeah. Well, so, yeah. So Michael. when your tube socks come <laughs> off, you can... Well, I like, listen, I like a foot rub, uh, back on the massage, whatever. But I also get a little nervous if they're a little piquant or like a, you know, if there's a little moisture. A little something. You know. Okay. Uh, he briefly dated your cousin. No. What? You don't care about that. Briefly? I, briefly, yeah, I guess not. Because I have girlfriends, like, they we've all dated different people and it's all fine. Who cares? It's all fine? Yeah. People don't get, like, hold grudges. Cousin is just a little weird. It's like they're seeing each other every family reunion. Which I don't even have family reunions, so <laughs> you didn't know how fun this is going to be. I did had you? no idea. Okay, he wears bowling shoes. Come on, what are you even asking now? That's wild. No. Okay, but your twenty-four-year-old self. Oh boy. So it's like he's like a guy in New York trying to be I don't quirky know. and fun. Could you? Yeah, I mean, at that time, yeah, pretty much anyone would. Find a place in my heart. But it's New York. Yeah. In New York, maybe. What about you? No. You don't seem superficial. Oh, that's nice. That's a nice compliment. Okay. Can you tell us about meeting your husband? <gasps> yes. I met him in the audition for Happy Endings. And then, but I was dating someone else. And Ooh, we. Wait, this is in LA. This is in LA. And did the show for about a year. And then I had broken up with my boyfriend. And I was just like suddenly hit with like, I'm so in love with him. But he was like, oh, I can't date the actresses. And suddenly I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> this doesn't work out how I thought. So then it took me about eight months. I kept working on it. It was really sad, actually. So I had to chase him to a degree that's so uncomfortable. You were kind of the aggressive. Yeah. But he loves you. He totally He, like, he does. totally. Yes, I think are. everyone, He's every dead. woman's always like, so he was just key. like, oh, this is like your guys' thing. Like, he didn't want to date an <laughs> actress. You didn't I want know. to date a writer. But like, genuinely, all... you know, every woman is always like, the key is finding a man that loves you more than you love him and I'm like we're the opposite I think I think I'm more this is gonna make people feel sorry for me I don't mean it like this but I'm definitely like the more into him one I think he says I'm insane for saying that but I do sort of feel you are. Well, yeah. well, they say how you met is the thing you always go back to and it's like truly defines your relationship really? to such such a deep degree like whatever you felt during that initial period is gonna be like lingering backdrop what, so wait, so what It's was like the, the childhood of your relationship. So, you know, you always go back to childhood. I'm trying to apply this to my own life. So when you guys first started dating, you, yeah. like, you were like head over. And head how, over heels. So how did it he go would go from, to the like, bathroom. Work- I was sad. It is really and sweet. And go to the bathroom. But I'd only really ever dated like friends before that. Like we're pals. We're buddies. So I'd never really actually had the experience of being like, I think maybe I, I was always, I would, it was in love, but I never had had this experience. I think I thought I had. So what was the shift? I don't know. I always went for safe, like, guys that would be, like, my best pal, like a roommate or, like, kind of very unintimidating people. Oh. Never, ever put myself out there like that to where I'm, like, chasing someone who's just dating West Hollywood hostesses. And so then how did you guys actually start the dating process? Well, I mean, I was up to such strange stuff. I can't even tell you. I was a tarot card reader. I made my friends do a prayer group. Like, I was up to stuff. (laughs) I was like, this is the person for me. I know it, but it's not happening at all. So finally, I decided I had to really do it and start dating other people. And then he was like, you want to go on a date? And then that was oh. it. <laughs> so just start because I really was like, no, I really do have to start dating other people. This is crazy. One time I was like, I'm not going to speak to him anymore, and that's going to show him. Three agonizing months later, I ran into him at a bar, and he was like, Hey, you had no idea we weren't speaking. That is, <sighs> yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So I was like, I gotta just, I gotta start dating other people, that is and like, genuinely let him go. Some people, but I didn't even have him to let him go. <laughs> <laughs> this is just embarrassing. 
But then you guys started. Yeah, we started dating and yeah, we got engaged pretty quick. Was it difficult to work together? No, we had such a great time. Such a great time. So we've done two other shows after that one together and we have such a great time working together. I do think because he's a writer, I will say this. He's so generous in that. He really, you know, it's hard to get a part, especially a part for someone to see you in a different way. When oh, he yes. writes oh, me such and beautiful totally I, material. Oh, I'm so fucking, you know, that's why I'm with him. I was no. actually thinking about this as well. Uh, is there a character that you would really love to play? That's already been played? Not, d- it doesn't have to be, yes. Slightly more grounded. Like I look at a career of like Laura Dern or someone like that. And I'm always mincing about, you know, in my work. And I, I hate when big comedians are like, I just want to do a drama. It's like, please just do what we want you to do and what we want to laugh at. And I'm not likening myself to that. But I would like to do, have the opportunity to do more grounded stuff. And I've been doing it, but, you know, in the margins. Okay, you brought something weird, Casey Wilson. I brought something weird. Dear listeners, Casey, something weird is really big. Christmas Eve three years ago, my father put a thing of twine under the Christmas tree, like a spool, and told my husband and I to follow this to our gift around the house. We had no fucking clue what this would be. And in my closet, my childhood closet, he had gotten this as not a joke, a six-foot portrait that he had made of himself. (laughs) Oh, of himself what? wearing <laughs> in a fake gold leaf frame wearing oh, a mustard blazer oh my god this is the best something weird ever <laughs> wearing a mustard blazer i mean what? he thought i wanted that he thought someone would want that i six feet tall portrait of himself he's he's resting this. an arm on a chair holy shit yeah. <laughs> that's like, Paul Wilson at work uh, and I asked him I said why would you ever think I would want this he's like well when I come into your house like you know you got so many photos of your mom up I'm like she died he's like well I just wanted you to have one of me <sighs> okay Casey yeah I love this something okay. weird so much okay. dear listeners you really like we we didn't do it justice we'll we're gonna put some photos up if your dad doesn't mind, Casey. Of course. He wants this. This is what he wants. Yeah, he looks like he wants it. He wants this. Okay, I really think <laughs> that you need to do yeah. like a six-month exchange. With, like with a gallery? No, with like your friends. I got gotcha, you. I, I got gotcha. you. should be like a ceremonial thing that happens. I know. Every six and we months. pass like, it like around. A, yeah. We like got a, one of those gold like gallery lights. picnic where we pass around <laughs> yeah. your dad. Yes. I made keychains of it. I should have brought you one for my for my wedding because people needed it that much. I like agree, they wanted yeah, it with I them. I can understand. Whitney can Cummings under- has it on her keychain to this day five years later because yeah. it made that much of an impact. I love this. Can we Everyone's make Everyone's like, this- was he joking? No. This is a man. So you'll see in the photos, but his hair is a longer hair for a father, for a businessman, longer white hair. He also got that hair permed after my mom died. He got a perm. Perm? Out of nowhere, called me and said, I'm getting a perm. Um, is this one of those paintings where it sort of looks like his eyes are following you? Or yep, you it's like, yeah, it's like the Mona Lisa. Yeah. I mean, he does look cute. He's so proud of this oh, idea. he looks so handsome. Uh, well, he was very he, handsome he's very, father. he's sweet. He, he looks excited. What's his name again? Casey? Paul, Paul Wilson. Hey, dear Paul Wilson, if you listen to your daughter's <laughs> oh, publicity hear tours, it. I have to tell you, you're hear. very handsome and we want to pass around this gorgeous painting all around Hollywood. Gorgeous. We did an unveiling at Thanksgiving at my house and he pulled it down because he wanted to really, you know, we're going to get a little plaque too. What they have in a museum because it does deserve that. You know what we should do? Mm. We should make it a life goal to get it into Barbara Streisand's house. (gasps) Our goal is Paul over the oh. fireplace. Oh, wow. That's a goal. It's over a goal. Babs' or fireplace. In her bathroom. Honestly, anywhere in the rec room I would take. A rec that room. Be amazing. Amazing. And then if we really want to reach for the stars, we try to accomplish share. I don't know. What do we if do? If we want it. Cher, I feel like, has the right sense of humor for it, too, that she would maybe go for it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's really something. And thank you, Michael, for carrying it up the stairs. It's actually quite light, given how much you paid for it. Seventeen hundred dollars. <laughs> no, but it was listen. worth every penny. <laughs> worth every penny. My brother got amazing. one made of himself last Christmas as a gift and found a mustard blazer and got it. It looked exactly like it. So this Christmas, I have to make one for myself. This is well done. Oh God, I have to tell I you really- this. So one time, I I was talking about it somewhere. I can't remember. And my dad's like, texts me the guy that 
did it, his phone number and his name. I'm like, dad, again. He's like, so other people could get them. I go, dad, again, we're making fun of this. We're not going to tell, you know, say the guy's name. We're not trying to get in business. This is something to be made fun of. I don't. Casey, you don't think it's wrong. Mixing, right. Okay. It's like <laughs> probably really come right back around. Okay. Okay. You he know? looks like the, the CEO of TJ Maxx. <laughs> Or like a Wetzel's Pretzels owner like, uh, of, a, of a franchise. <sighs> yeah, yeah. It's also very important with a leather chair he's leaning on. I feel envious. This is by far. <laughs> I'm so happy that you responded. Weird. I didn't know how no, it would go. And the effort that it took for you to get it Thank here. Thank you. Casey, my assistant that... had to put that in my van and <laughs> Michael had to carry it up here. I to say it felt like you really loved me. No, I did. I did want to put effort into it and we did cover it up for a reveal. You did. It was amazing. Okay, good. This is, I'm so happy. This is incredible. I do think it's worth looking up and I never like to take effort for anything. But if you're listening, I think it's worth a glance. It's incredible. Thank you. I love Paul. <laughs> He's the best. Is, he is the best. Is Paul dating? He's married. He's remarried to a great mm-hmm. woman. Yeah? Who was just as disturbed by the photo as I was. Does she like the... She was alarmed by the So painting. that's why it's here in California. <laughs> yeah, well, it was given to me inexplicably. And my husband was like, what the fuck? So we had to pay to ship it? it out here. Where do you keep it in your house? Great question. We used to keep it in a, my kid's playroom, but we've upgraded it. We have a bar in our house, like a drinking bar, and it's in there on a wall of honor. I love it. Yeah. This episode is brought to you in part by Plant Botanical. As everyone slowly comes out of hiding, many of you are asking the same questions. Am I ready for actual human contact? Should I swipe right? Will they look like their picture? Do I look like my picture? Is that the face of an ax murderer? Do I really want to take off these sweats? And for those of you who get that far, what drink should I be casually sipping? I have the answer to that one. While your date sits awkwardly silent, stunned by your good looks, dazzled by your intellect, or wondering how to dispose of your body, the drink in your hand should be delicious, refreshing, crisp, clean, plant botanical vodka seltzer. Weighing in at only one carb, made with real fruit and botanicals traditionally used for stamina, immunity, and detox, plant botanical is already thinking about your future encounters. Follow and DM at Plant Loves You and share a story or video of your funniest, wildest, or most awkward date for a chance to win up to $1,000 for your next one. Plant Botanical, your perfect companion while you look for your perfect companion. Available at Target, Pavilions, Vons, Total Wine, or visit plantlovesyou.com to find a store near you. Plant Vodka and Vodka Seltzer, just the good shit. Casey, here's what we're about to do. We're okay. going to call somebody who's going to ask us for advice. Okay. And then we will, we, I'll attempt, but you're going to give great advice. We're going to do our best. All right. We're going to do our best. That's okay. all we can do. That's all we can do. That's all we can do. Hello. Hi, is this Joey? Yes. Hi. Hi, it's Anna Ferris. Hi, Joey. It's Casey Wilson. Hi. Nice to meet you guys. Will you tell us what's going on? So basically, I have been trying to move forward in future relationships, you know, dating and, you know, trying new things and talking to new people. But I find it hard to have that like really good connection with someone because I have a a couple exes that still really try to like stay in my life, not to move forward with me. But they just like, I guess like if I move forward, it bothers them and they always just want to be around. And there was one who I kind of considered the one that got away. Anytime I run into him, it's just awkward. And I've tried the whole nice approach, the mean approach, the flat out ignoring approach. And it's like, no matter what I do, he's always there. And I start to like compare whoever I'm talking to currently into that relationship. Okay. Well, here are my questions initially. Do you still have feelings? I I mean, of course you do if you describe him as the one that got away, right? Yeah, he'll always be my heart. In my experience, I don't know if this is true for you or other people, but my in my experience with my breakups, there's always this feeling of like, I don't know if it was like youth or whatever, but of course I always wanted somebody, even if I didn't care for them at all, to be begging for 
me back. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's like every that's person's human nature, yeah. fantasy. Yeah. <laughs> and I've never really had that. Usually I had to like break up with them because they really were making it clear that they did not like me as much as I liked them. <laughs> <laughs> so are you looking for a relationship though, Joey? Do you want to be in one? Um, it's not exactly in my current goal to like try and be in a relationship, but I feel like every time the opportunity does present itself, I somehow run away or push that person away, like kind of on purpose. And I just think is that because I'm wanting that same magical experience I've had before in the new relationship or I don't know I I guess it's a question of I don't really know what I want but I know I don't want to stay where I'm at I think that you're tapping into something that most people go through which is the idea of like when you fall in love and you have these intense relationships especially in your teens and 20s and when things don't work out you like are searching for the euphoria that happens early on when you're falling in love and then you're searching for the solution of like why the relationship ended so i don't know if you ended these relationships and we're we're always trying to protect our pride right like so yeah right any breakup even if you're the one who did it or if you're the breaker upper or the breakup e or whatever it's still there's pride issues that you're dealing with like why didn't this work yes or like or, what does it say about me that right, or it didn't did, work why didn't they fight harder mm-hmm. or whatever or why didn't i pick a guy that's better right so but, wait yeah did you break up with him or he broke up with you i uh, broke up with me okay and how long ago uh that's the part about it is that it's been four years since we've broken up and he still like always is like there what do you mean mean yeah yeah what do you mean stalking like when you say you run into him yeah well i do work in a public place and he always comes there even though there is no need to or if i do run into him like out at a bar or something uh you know he always makes it a point to just kind of like trap me in the corner and talk about the past it seems like just- he wants you to stay like into him he wants to like keep you in that time but he wants to be free to go i think maybe would it help you to draw a boundary with him and just say like hey don't come into my store like i'm trying to move on if you truly want that yeah but here's the problem yeah if i were joey uh-huh. and in my 20s i would so be excited to see my ex I know. come in and try to like... But he's not trying to really start anything again, right? I know this is the problem though, right? Because you sh- probably shouldn't be in a relationship with this guy. But I understand that... I the totally understand. Like, but I think he's trying to have his cake and eat it too. Where it's like, we're not yeah. dating. But I still want to know and get my ego boost that you like me. Yes, exactly. At first I thought it was, you know, a little flattering. I was like, oh, you know, yeah, like you didn't want me then, but you want me now. How flattering. But now I'm just like, okay, like it's been so long and I just want to move on and I don't want to have to think about you all the time. Joey, I don't understand if he's the one that got away. Are you still kind of into him? And would you guys want to try anything again? If Or are you over that possibility? Yeah, it's not a possibility anymore. Okay. But there was a time when I would have wanted that, but I just grew up more, I guess you could say. But I think he's still bothering you, like in your heart. Like it's it has yeah. unrest. Otherwise, you would just see him and be like, hey. But don't you think, though, Casey and Joey, that anybody who's had an emotional impact on your life will always be a slight nagging thread yes. somewhere? In your, like somewhere yeah. in your soul yes. like like there's times when you don't think about a person for years or whatever like anybody who's had an emotional impact on your life they'll be there you know what i mean yes yeah, so to that point if he's not right. going anywhere physically and you're gonna see him i think you have to get stronger and do a little more work on your end of things and your side of the street in terms of like I'm not saying you're not in therapy or anything, but I think if you're not going to draw the boundary with him of like, hey, I'd rather not see you, I think we just have to like build up your kind of muscles of tolerance towards seeing him and not letting it affect you so that you could move on. And you know what, Joey, the awful thing is, I wouldn't even know how to begin giving dating advice because I've never really dated. I just seem (laughs) to hop into long-term relationship after long... It's, you know... I'm the same. I'm sorry, Joey, you've come to two people who... a Peace Corps, like it's like, oh yeah, I'm you're like a here. Teach for America <laughs> yeah. a stint. Yep. <laughs> yep. I totally understand that though, and JC, that was a you know that is a good point. I probably am not taking enough of that accountability, and should probably 
look a little bit more inward rather than blaming it on him. No, 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 no. I, I don't. I don't think it's necessarily that. I mean, Casey thinks so. Casey thinks, but I don't mean it in totally a bad guilty. way. No, no. I mean it like for your own. What's the word? Like your own confidence that like you can put up a boundary without saying it to him but you will have to actually get there emotionally. Well, and also I think that we just all have to understand the idea that if we have a like any kind of sensitive heart, we will always carry feelings of remembrance and nostalgia whether it's positive or negative towards our exes, mm-hmm. people that like you know, so understand that, Joey, and you guys may have grown apart and memory sharpens itself. So you may be remembering things that were a little more maybe positive or passionate. Uh, maybe you are also remembering the negative things. Mm-hmm. But I wonder, are you still, but what do you think you want? With them all popping up, it's, I, I realize it's not them themselves that I miss. I just miss, like, I guess those special times that we had that were like, you know, really great memories. And um, obviously the one that got away, I always kind of miss him, but uh, that's something you can't really get rid of. I know. Joey, I'm worried that you're in denial. I think you still really like this dude, probably irrationally. You probably broke up for a reason, (laughs) but I wonder if it's like the memory nostalgia issue happening a little bit. And then when he comes and like pops back up in your life, it's hard to move on. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the memories are so vivid as if it was, you know, just yesterday. Am I crazy to say, like, would you go out with him again for, like, a a drink or something? Um, No, he's in another relationship now. What? I knew it. What? Why is he visiting you? That's why I said he needs to put up a boundary. You're right. You're right. Emotionally or verbally. Uh, I think emotionally, because it's a little crazy to say to a guy who's in a relationship, like, don't come and see me anymore. He's like, I'm not. I think just (laughs) you need to get stronger. Let him go to where he doesn't even affect you at all. Truly. I think that when we are lonely and we're searching, we do get nostalgic. Yeah. So, you know, you're thinking about some of these, your previous relationships that, you know, you felt passionately about and or whatever, like we all do. But I think that you're looking for solutions in the past. And yes. I just don't mm-hmm. know if, if um, the answers are there. Yeah. And also, I know it fucking sucks, but I don't know if we grow as humans all that well if we don't have like a solid ass ego bruising like every few yes, years. Yes, this will be a good thing. <laughs> you know, and, and not that you, your Joey, your ego has necessarily been bruised, but I do think in wanting to potentially be in a relationship and sort of figuring out like your feelings with these past relationships, I think that you may be susceptible to, you know, revisiting maybe failed things and then potentially being heartbroken. I think we got to look towards the future, Joey. Yes. Let's what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? Future. Joey, I think you sound lovely. <laughs> I think you sound lovely and I'm not worried about you one bit. Oh, thank you so much. It's true, Joey. I think so too. You guys, thank you. That was I mean, eye-opening, honestly. Oh, you're kind. I do want you to know, Joey, that we all fucking fall in love and we all get our heart broken. And if that doesn't happen to all of us, man, that's like a missed opportunity on like the essential human experience. That's right. So please know that you're on your journey. You're on your journey. <laughs> and with any luck, <laughs> there's going to be are. like eight more heartbreaks. <laughs> yeah, with any luck, this will happen again. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> Joey, I love you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Joey. You just sound awesome. Thank you so much. This podcast is amazing. It's a really kind of a safe place to go to. So. Oh, Thank Joey. You. That is the biggest compliment I could receive. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye, you guys. Bye. Bye, Bye, Joey. Will you tell us a joke? Do you have a favorite joke? Oh, God. I know, it's the worst. This is awful. The only one I can think of is not appropriate for these times. Literally, the only joke coming to my head is something my grandfather told me. Oh, good. It's not a joke. No, I love a grandpa joke. Okay, okay. Three couples die in a car crash. They're in heaven. St. Peter's at the gate. The first guy goes up, and St. Peter says to the guy, you know what? We can't let you in here. You liked alcohol so much. You married a woman named Sherry. You can't come in. This is a terrible joke. Second guy comes up and he's like, you can't come in here either. He goes, you loved money so much. You were so gluttonous for money. You named a woman named Penny. You married a woman named Penny. And then this is not right for these times. I love And then the last guy goes to his wife, well, 
Fanny, let's get on out of here. <laughs> it's not funny. Nobody's no, laughing. No, awesome. people are looking at me like when I said Tinker Toys. Uh, that's my grandpa Red told that a lot, and it's not great. I don't even Fanny's know. Fanny's fucking awesome. You know he loved. But do we in our country <laughs> use Fanny ass? Or yes, I think Fanny's ass. But I think we can extrapolate that he loved it all, front okay. end the back. Oh, good. Yeah, most men do. Most men do. <laughs> oh, Casey. And thank you. I'm so happy to have been here. I'm it's so. It's nice to do someone else's podcast than not do my and, I and not be on your side yours. of it. You are invited anytime. It's called Bitch Session. It's about the Real Housewives, and it's very stupid. Um, <laughs> but what, it's for your... highbrow people who love garbage things. I love that idea. Sometimes we just need to shut off, and it's a safe space not to do that. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes, so, all the time, isn't it? Like 18 hours a day. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, you're a delight. Thank you so much for being here, Casey. Oh,